to ask you, parents and godparents of Sophia, the faith that we have just professed together this day, is this the faith you wish to have her baptized into? Yes. Please hold her over the font. Here we go. And Sophia, I baptize you in the name of the Father <gasps> and of the Son <gasps> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Just want to step back. I'd like to invite Timothy, parents and godparents, to please come forward. Oh, big yawn, big yawn. I ask you, parents and godparents of Timothy, the faith that we have just professed together this day, is this the faith that you wish to have him baptized into? Yes. yes. Please. And Timothy, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <gasps> and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ooh. There you go. Want to hand her to me? Thank you. She's really slippery. In She's really slippery. That's all right. <laughs> in this dress. Absolutely. Hi there. Please. Let's show you guys off. Please come with me. Here she is. <laughs> Three gifts for Sophie and Timothy that are meant to reveal in a deeper way the meaning of the sacrament we have celebrated with them. The first is an anointing with holy oil. Um, <clears throat> I know oil can be a symbol that's difficult for us in our society, in our culture. We don't use it the way they used to use it in ancient times. I mean, we use it to uh, keep our cars running. We use it for deep frying foods. And of course, my favorite summertime use is of course for tanning. But um, in the ancient world, warriors before going to battle would often anoint themselves with oil because they believe it made them stronger, which is actually a great, great image for us because if you've ever tried to live the Christian life, I mean really live it, you know some days it's a battle. Some days it is just a fight to do what we know is right and be the people we know we should be, so not bad at all. But even more significantly, in the scriptures, people who were chosen by God for special office, for special mission, were anointed with oil as a sign of that divine choice. We believe that Christ was anointed, as we heard in the scripture, uh, with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, um, as priest, prophet, and king. And now that Timothy and Sophia have become part of the body of Christ, they share in that anointing. They share in that work of Christ. Sophia, Timothy, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin and given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He's welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Sophia, we anoint you, prophet, priest, and king. <gasps> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and Timothy, we anoint you, prophet, priest, and king. There you are. What is that? Yeah, as I say, this chrism oil is our most sacred oil. It's olive oil mixed with uh, myrrh and other wonderful perfumes. So I can say don't often say it, but make sure you smell the baby today because it's uh, just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, the second gift we have for them is a white garment. They're obviously already dressed in white. Uh, it's a sign of the new life they've entered into. It comes to us from the book of Revelation where John the seer has a vision of thousands of people in heaven, all of them dressed in white and singing Hosanna to the son of David. We are told they are those who have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. Anyone baptized has a right to a white garment, like we're wearing right here, right? 
It's a reminder of baptism and our call to service to one another. Um, if you would like one, I can tell you where you can get one. You can wear it shopping or whatever you need to do. When people say, what's that? You can say, it's my baptismal garment. Great opportunity for evangelization. Take advantage of it. In any case, Sophia and Timothy, you have become new creations and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in your white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends and this community of faith to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here you go, Timothy. There you go. And the final gift is, of course, their baptismal candle. I invite the godparents to come forward and light these candles from this large candle here in the center of the church. This is our Paschal candle, the uh, Easter candle that was lit for the very first time at the great vigil of Easter when we celebrated the resurrection of Christ, his triumph over darkness and over death. It's this light of the risen Christ, the light of faith, that is given to these children today. Please take the candles, hold them where your godchildren can see them but can't grab them. <laughs> Thank you. Parents, godparents, and this community of faith, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. These children have been enlightened by Christ. They are to always walk as children of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts. When the Lord comes, may they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sophia, Timothy, you have put on Christ. In him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. And let us welcome the newest members of the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs>